Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. As always, guys, want to thank everybody that is supporting us over on Patreon. And again, invite everybody to join us over there as well, where there's exclusive videos going up a couple times a week. And we go deep diving into a lot of different topics. There was a message here about the time that's, uh, well, the time that we're stepping into. We are stepping into incredible times of rapid change. It's going to be mind-blowing. We're stepping in it, and it's noticeable. Yeah, so look at this now. You <laughs> Obviously, there's a lot of people that were watching the eclipse in one way, shape, or form. And some might not be homo sapiens. I'm just saying, you know, there's a lot of beings that are out there that are watching the happenings on Earth right now very, very intently. Because I think there's a lot of them out there that are rooting for us to wake up. Wake up, humans. Don't you realize what's going on? Wake up. You're not alone. We're here with you. Now, you know, again, the dark side will try to cover things up and say, well, you know, that was just CGI. And then there's no other evidence. I had one person say something uh, about the, um, the, the interesting Chinese mountain that looks to be shaped like a dragon. Mm. And then say, OK, so that's supposed to be evidence of dragons. No, there's tons of evidence of all these different things out there, whether we're talking aliens, I mean, you couldn't spend an entire lifetime if that's all you were to do and cover everything. There's so much out there that the system's always trying to cover and get rid of and eradicate. And I'm very suspicious about anybody that tries to dissuade things like that with just one blanket statement because so often they're on the payroll of the system. This is the bottom line. They're either, you know, CIA, FBI, or they're working for Twitter. Maybe they're working for Google. Maybe they're working for the UN. I mean, there's so many different tentacles of this control system that has their, you know, nose in everybody's business. Well, plus we're not trying to put out evidence or prove ourselves to anyone. We're putting the information out so other people can know the truth. Yeah, for those that have eyes, let them see. And for those that have ears, that they can listen. For those that are too indoctrinated, well, go back to sleep. Don't worry, it'll all be over soon. Yeah, <laughs> it will be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, that's just like telling, again, the person that is just oblivious to the fact that they're on a train track and the train is coming on down and maybe they got a headset on, they're listening to... P. Diddy, and they don't know it's coming, and then you're trying to motion to them, and they're giving you the double middle finger. Well, all right, good luck with that. Good luck. That's all we could do, guys. Again, there are going to be those that are going to see through all the BS that's constantly served to us, and there's going to be others that you're never going to wake up in this time, and they'll just do it over again and again and again and again. Until they don't, until finally, you know, they decide in some way, shape, or form, the higher self smacks them hard enough that they actually do uh, get a clue as to what's really going on. It's really just one orchestrated event after another. Indeed. So here we have Russia has announced that the terrorists who killed 143 people I remember 143 from high school being a code for I love you. <laughs> Don't you? I, I, I remember some phone numbers and stuff in like some songs and whatnot, but I don't remember that. Well, one, I, love is a four-letter word, and you is a three-letter word. So, you know, what's the message behind 143 people lost? It is some sort of code, and, and this is part of that big reveal. So... Go ahead. Well, it's obviously a sick and twisted code, if that's what it means. Well, that's the system. Everything is inside out and upside down. Demonic entities portray themselves to be the creator and benevolent, and it's really the opposite. So Russia's announced that the terrorists that killed 143 people at the Crocus City 
Hall in Moscow were paid by the Ukrainian energy company Burisma. Wait a minute, Burisma sounds familiar. Yeah, Hunter B. served on the board of directors for Burisma, Ukraine's largest private gas producer from 2014 to 2018. Now, all this is supposed to be riling us up. That's part of it. They want to rile us up. They want us to know this. This is what we have to realize. Why do they want us to know this? And then you see this from RT. All Ukrainians must fight. So says a general. Alexander Pav- Pavluk uh, warned in a Facebook post on, mo- on Monday that Ukrainian citizens must realize that none of them, none of them will be able to escape mobilization. None of them. That, that's just the definition of insanity. Why? Why would they? Why should people lose their lives fighting for their country? Now that sounds like something that's so anti everything that we're taught and it, and that taught is really indoctrinated into, because we're taught to be patriotic for your country. Well, I mean, the reality is, it Ukraine didn't exist as a country until December 1st, 1991. So this December, Ukraine's going to uh, turn 33. That's another code, another master number, and another message. So you're supposed to go and die every single last citizen to serve the country that hasn't even been around 33 years? But why? Because, yes, maybe life was rougher under the Soviet Union, but weren't you still alive? The reality is there is no freedom in this world because we're all debt, debt slaves, monetary slaves, so why should people die and also take other people's lives for an entity that hasn't even existed half the average lifespan, but that might be half the average lifespan or it might be the entire lifespan of people going into the uh, cell cities that will go in the technological route and merge into the Borg. So, I mean, 32 years ago, it didn't exist. And now everybody, all the millions of people, tens of millions of people that are living on that landmass are supposed to sacrifice their lives to fight off being taken over by Russia. What's that really going to serve other than just loose death and destruction to feed very demonic entities? It, it, it's a mess, and, and that's what it is. And we're just trying to help people see the mess that we are in because you, until you see something, you really can't make any changes. Absolutely. And so you got to recognize the indoctrination begins at birth, and it never stops. And it's an indoctrination that pits people of one nationality against the other. You know, when you when you look at this, And you see, 1948, State of Israel proclaimed. So Israel did not exist, you know, for 1,800 years plus. 1,800 years. And then it was reborn right before these crazy times, as was Ukraine. And now the world is being led into the death of hundreds of millions, if not billions, because of these two nations that have been brought back into existence by a power structure that all they want to do is eliminate the population. That's that's kind of what they want to do, yes. I mean, that's pretty simple. It's pretty obvious. More and more people are waking up to this fact. So why are, are people going along with this? When you look at this, you know, May 14th, 1948, David Ben-Gurion proclaims the state of Israel, establishing the first Jewish state in 2,000 years. Yeah, well, not quite, but, you know, again, why, why, why? Well, you know, all this starts way before a modern Zionist movement established in the late 19th century by Jews in the Russian Empire, who called for the establishment of a territorial Jewish state after enduring persecution. So it it goes back into this time period, as I was telling Cindy, um, Russia 
was in just a nonstop period of of conflicts, one after another, eventually led to the death of Tsar Nicholas and his family, or maybe they were actually jettisoned outwards, and you know maybe they lived out lives uh, their lives on some beautiful island in the middle of nowhere. We we won't really know, honestly. I mean, we we again are basing everything that we have on the history, which is constantly being revised. Even if they give us DNA uh, data, how do we know it's really the real DNA data? Just like, how do you know those ice core samples are legit? When who's controlling the science? Who's paying for the studies? It's the system. Everything is the system. We cannot trust anything out of the system. And yet we're referring to what it gives us. Because this is how the masses are indoctrinated into killing ourselves. And this is what really happens. So Ottoman-controlled Palestine was chosen as the most desirable location for a Jewish state. By who? By the control system. This is no act of God. In fact, you know, again, we'll go deeper into it for those that are not afraid uh, at looking at the truth. It's never been about the creator of this universe. None of this has. As you see this face, this is a Rothschild that supposedly recently left the planet. Well, maybe he did leave. Maybe he's having a, a nice vacation on Mars. You know, it, reality is stranger than most people would think. And that's definitely true. I mean, he could be. We just we really can't trust anything unless you're there looking at it with your own two hands and your two eyes and you know even then the system will come back and say don't believe your lying eyes <laughs> they have ways of doing that they're very very manipulative and any information you get out there I mean, one thing that we always push is go learn for yourself go look for yourself go feel for yourself because no you cannot trust that system out there it's horrible it's evil it's more evil than you could ever imagine and that's you know, one thing that's a problem that's not a problem, but it's a problem is so many people have such good hearts. They have such big hearts that they cannot believe or fathom that the control system would give them a book full of sacred scriptures that's leading them in a false direction. They just can't believe it. They can't believe that the, the control system would give them a Bible to believe in and pour their heart and soul in and their everything in. And they can't believe that that control system did it with the intention. The only intention is to control you. It's, it's just to control you. Sure, there's some nice things in there, but do you ever read it? It's real. And this is what the control system gave us to completely believe. And, and people just cannot fathom that. And that means that there's some really good hearts out there. But it's heartbreaking to see what goes on and how much people believe and they believe on and on and on and on and on. Now, <clears throat> sadly, the only reason I know this is because I have seen evil. I know what evil is. And it's just, it's almost incomprehensible. And I feel sorry for anyone else who has had to comprehend it and can see it for what it is. It's not a good thing. But unfortunately, we're at a time where it is time to look at and see what, what the problem is so we can fix it. Absolutely. And this is the Balfour Declaration, which was November 2nd, 1917. One war leads into another. The circumstances of one war, why one war is created, is to lead into the next war. It's nonstop, never-ending wars, nonstop, never-ending death and destruction. And that's what maintains the system in place. So this is a letter to a Rothschild, dear Lord Rothschild. Again, uh, this is the system that gives us the prophecies and then fulfills it. It's not the creator of this universe. And, and of that, we are absolutely positive. Absolutely. Palestine for the Jews. So what could create more discord than uprooting one group of people and putting another group of people in place? It's happening right now. The UN's behind it. The same, same entities are behind right now. All those migrants in flooding into all different nations, they're, they're behind this, the restoration of Israel. They're behind 
the recreation of, of Ukraine in, in the modern times. When you go back to around 900 AD, it was the Kievan Rus. That was the two words that identified the one new nation of the people that lived in Kiev and also lived all the way up, uh, not just through Moscow and up towards St. Petersburg, but, you know, again, the, the Russian and Slovakian people that became one unified people, the Kievan Rus, it's, it's all about just divide and conquer, keep them divide, keep, keep them divided, keep them conquered. Yeah, the whole banking system is, it's, and again, the Rothschilds, they're the red shield. They're the shield for those that are staying in the darkness and quiet. They're a public face. They're meant to be public. This is part of, of their purpose. As you see, again, these statements should say everything. I care not what puppets placed upon the throne of England to rule the empire, on which the sun never sets. The man who controls Britain's money supply controls the British empire, and I control the British money supply. So again, you know, monarchs and presidents are nothing but puppets. They've always been nothing but puppets. So what we saw was first to the creation of uh, Israel, and they're still being a, a Palestine, albeit smaller, and then the slow but sure end of Palestine and expansion of Israel. Now, the Israelites, uh, the Jewish people, that's, that's another story too, because it's not what it's made out to be. And this is the UN Declaration, you know, again, giving life, not, not the creator of this universe, um, saying that they, they have a chosen people. And it was never the case. The creator of this universe never said, my people are the Jewish people. That is it just, it's, un, and how could you possibly fathom that statement? That is so anti-everything that, that this whole reality is all about. And yet people believe that. Well, it's because, you know, that's not how the original wording is, as we've shown out. Yahweh, Yahweh, one of the group of judges of this world, a military um, system that took over this world, conquered this world through war, conflict, death, and destruction, and is now ruling this world. Uh, yeah, they, they each took tribes to have as their playthings and to play chess with, and that's what our wars are. They're nothing but extraterrestrial chess games against each other with real human suffering. You know, the, I think the strongest thing that I, I saw today was just a simple sentence that says, <clears throat> it says, God is not in the Bible. <laughs> There's all kinds of stuff in the Bible, but God, the all-loving being of light and love that we speak of, He's not in the Bible. That's these are you're looking at it, the gods of the Bible. You're looking at them on the screen. They're all in there. All these control control freaks, and and that's why we are the way we are because we know where that book comes from. Sure, there's some nice things in there. They better put some nice things in there, or they're gonna you know kind of be <laughs> they're gonna be um, uh, you know people will see who they are if they don't put nice things in there. But the God of light and love and love and light is not in that Bible. Yeah, so they say by virtue of their natural and historic right. But when you look back farther, you know, again, uh, what happened to make Israel available? Genocide, like what's happening right now. You know, it was basically extermination. It was a military occupation. Why in the Bible do they constantly say Lamb of God, Lamb, Ram? What's the sign of war? <laughs> Mars, Aries, right? It's, it's war, and, and these are the gods of war and conquest. So, yeah, there were Canaanite peoples. Uh, there were people uh, living in this area for a very, very long time since the younger Dryas. Um, extinction event, which I don't think is as far back as they say. Um, and that's been coming to me more and more lately. 
I don't think it's as far back. It might be even like half of what they say. Um, but th people have been there the whole time. And what's fascinating is you'll see some people say, well, they were all giants. They were all evil offspring of, you know, they were the Nephilim, da, 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 da. But, you know, the DNA, this is the skull of a normal average person. And this person, they say, lived about 3,800 years ago. It doesn't look like a giant to me. I mean, I've seen a lot of giant uh, bones on Earth and, and photographs. And, you know, the Smithsonian, as we know, has done away with whatever they can and, and try to get rid of them as much as possible. But there's still a lot of documentation and old newspaper clippings and accounts of people unearthing giant bones. There were many different giants. Yes, there were some that were uh, that C-A-N word. Yeah, like the guy down in Haiti. Absolutely. And, you know, they, yet there were others that were gentle. There are accounts of um, sailors coming from Europe going into Patagonia encountering giants. Patagonia is in, in South America, by the way. Argentina and Chile and there's even depictions of giants on maps down there and they're friendly and they're eager to talk and you know they're they're little ones of uh, maybe five years old are like the size of us you know they were these were big big people that were exterminated because again they were not controllable we've shared with you before what happened to the Denisovans as we found that Many have Denisovan and Neanderthal DNA. When Cindy looked into how did the Denisovans die, it was what you see in the sky every day now. Yeah, it was spraying in the sky. It was spraying in the sky that wiped out the Denisovans. Homo sapiens didn't wipe out the Denisovans. The control system wiped out the Denisovans. And it's ongoing, it's ongoing, and until we look at it for what it is, people are just going to keep riding on the same boat, going down the same river, doing the same things. <laughs> Nobody's going to jump off because they don't think there's anything to be afraid of. The control system is not nice. And so many things are so distorted. As, you know, when you look, well, you know, if, if Judaism really is the root of Christianity and Islam— then what does Judaism really say about the Messiah, you know, the anointed one? And, you know, you're taught as a Christian that Jews didn't recognize the Messiah because they were, they were expecting a man uh, of war and not a man of peace. And, and the reality is the real Yeshua was a man of peace, and he was trying to point out the system and that the system is a system of war conquest. And there's a couple quotes in the Bible that I think are um, pretty accurate. Like when he said, you know, your God is not my God. Heck no, no. Yours is the bloodthirsty, you know, a, a system that's been in place since the beginning. A system that knows nothing but lies. Yet what were the, the Jews looking for? Or the Israelites or the Jewish people or however we want to term this one particular group. Uh, some believe that they are just truly Phoenicians, and others believe that they are truly Martians, literally. The Ajiji coming from uh, Mars, coming here to take their place as the lower middle management, lower management uh, of this planet, while the real rulership was away. Well, you know, again, it... it it's not really a big thing in, in the Torah, and the Talmud does talk about it as well. And the Talmud is, the Torah is the five books of Moses. Those, those five books re recognize, again, th what we have has been changed over time. In fact, it, it was the job of scribes, again, not to put in, well, things weren't given with the vowels. Vowels have power uh, and they have the ability to manifest. So vowels were not put into the writings. And the Masoretes, the Masoretic texts, these are the scribes that were taught how to translate. And over time, the translations changed and were edited to become monotheistic. 
when originally they were not monotheistic. Uh, and also, they're, they're not about the creator. That's the bottom line. They're not about the creator of this universe. In fact, when you read in the Talmud and you read uh, what David is actually saying, he's actually giving homage to the conqueror, not the creator, the conqueror of this world, not the creator. There's a big difference there. That's a huge difference. And, and that's what these beings are. And so when you're looking at this, you know, the Messiah or the anointed one, it does appear several times, but there are scant references to such a person in the Bible. And especially with somebody that's going to come at the end of days. In fact, when you look at Jesus, the rider on the on the white horse, and, and the thought that Jesus is going to come back on a white horse, that's Vedic. It, it, <laughs> that's the next incarnation of um, Vishnu in the Vedic line of thinking. And yet, it's not thought that that's coming for a very, very long time. But I think even the Vedic system is twisted, truly, uh, and distorted. I, no system on this planet has escaped the system editing it to make it useful. So if it's not about somebody that's going to be a blood sacrifice for sin, no, no, no. It, it, it's about a warlike leader. That's, you know, again, reestablishing uh, the greatness of Israel, which when you look to Islam, who is the Imam Mahdi and what will he do as the end of time comes near the end of an age? Corruption will spread like wildfire. Injustice will be prevalent. The strong will persecute the weak and evil people will come into power. For the believers, this will be a very tough time, and they will wish for something to relieve them of this darkness. It will be at this point that Allah will give permission for Muhammad ibn Abdullah al-Hassani, the Imam Mahdi, to appear. And so it, the, the thought is that he's actually been alive the whole time. He's just been kind of like an immortal in so many ways and is waiting for the time to come out and unify, unify Islam, and do what? Well, people are going to gather around him, and he will lead the believers into many battles. This is the warlike system. He's going to be a military leader again. Hmm. You look. What does he look like? He has a high forehead. Hmm. Okay, and a prominent nose. Well. I don't know. It ain't me, though. I'm telling you guys, it ain't me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, I'm just kind of curious, though, because I, I didn't study into this part of it. Um, my my ability to read is not like Mike's. But I'm wondering, these people that do believe in the Islam, I mean, do, do they think that this is the creator of all, or do they recognize that it's an alien? I think that's a great, fabulous question. And I think that the original thoughts are one thing and the thoughts of the modern times are something totally different. So I think these things get merged when they're never really intended to be merged. You know, it's that game of, um, what was the game we did as kids where you sit in a circle and the teacher tells you to say one thing, you say it to the kid next to you, and by the time you get to the 21st kid, it's totally different. Yeah. You know, and I think it's just like that, but it's been guided by um, the control system. The Torah, again, the five books of Moses, which is the Jewish Torah, is silent on the afterlife because it's not about the afterlife. It's about living in this world. That's what it's about. It's how you're supposed to live in this world. It has nothing to do with life after death. And for Christians... Those five books have been the foundation point of their entire belief system. Of course, you know, you have the New Testament and the Old Testament. And it is also one that's subject to revision, as there were so many other books out there that were eliminated. Far more texts were omitted than were put into uh, the script. Sure. 
Mauro Bellino, this is his official channel here, and he is a Vatican translator. He, he used to translate for the Vatican. And so he can translate the Hebrew, he could translate the Aramaic, the Greek. And he says, the Elohim stories of the Bible, they're not stories about God. Not, not God if you want to really say the creator of this universe. They have nothing to do with the creator of this universe. They're about the controllers of this world. And the matrix, the dark matrix that we're in. This is so clear when you just simply look at the Hebrew and what those Hebrew words meant. And yet, people go off and die in war after war. They, they die for ideology. They die for their you know, religions. They, they die for their politics. And it just never stops. It, ignorance kills. And people that are patriotic for their country or believe that there's only one right dogma, unfortunately, they're very ignorant. And that makes them very, very dangerous because the system will use them to control and kill other people. <clears throat> well, you can see in a lot of these ancient texts that these beings make themselves out to be big and powerful, which would make the other beings out to be very minuscule and very weak. But I think we're in a time now where people need to recognize that. So anyone who is teaching anything good about light and love is going to teach you how big and powerful you are. They're not going to make themselves out to be this big, big, bad being who's going to punish you. I mean, that's just wrong. We're talking about love and light, the creator of the universe, this this being that you really can't put your finger on because you're not supposed to. It's the creator. It's, it's, it's an entity that is full of perfect love, perfect love. And that is, a lot of people aren't quite ready for that. But also we, we are kind of running up against learning a whole new way of being you know if you if you learn and understand that the old control system what you were raised with everything that you knew and every fiber of your being um is is wrong or is a lie even worse i mean some people it's just so overwhelming to stop and go back to kindergarten and learn it all over again and they just can't they just can't they, it's it's too much for them and and i understand that but you know, there's really no right way of doing things. If you can follow your heart, that's all you need to do. You're going to be loved by your guides and angels just as much as your dog loves you. <laughs> Even if you do something wrong, it doesn't matter. You're, if you're acting through the heart chakra, you're in a good place. You, you just can't beat that. And if everyone were to just stop the dogma and drop it and stop making themselves out to be better than the other... And work through the heart chakra we would be in a better place you know we're we're getting there you know progress not perfection i think that's what we need to remember and i need to be more forgiving too because i guess i'm i'm exposed to a lot of people who get hurt and a lot of people who are in pain because they're being punished by their family members for not believing the dogma so maybe that's where a little bit of my angst comes from and i can be kind of hard hard on things a little bit but um we're, we're all in a spot where we should just take a step back, work through the heart chakra. And if we find ourselves being so judgmental that someone is not allowed to think something different than you, wow, we need to look at that and expand ourselves. That's just what I'm saying. We need to just stop, stop judging one another and look back You know, keep your own side of the street clean. How is your life going? How, how are, how are things going in, in your realms? You know, how's your school? How's your home? Is your home kept? <laughs> keep your side of the road clean. And if everybody just focused on their side of the street, boy, we would live in a clean place. So I want to give you guys a few different channels. If you want to go down like a different route, you probably know most of these are some of these channels. Um, I view these kids as kids. They, they might be in their 30s, but to me, uh, they seem like really good people, and they are a lot of fun. They deep dive like nobody deep dives into some things. Um, 
you know, some of their videos are mind-blowing. I think he did a six-hour video one time. It was just insane. A 12-hour video. I mean, this is the type of deep dives that sometimes I find myself, um, like I could go down, but, you know, I would wipe Cindy out and and it would just, look at this one, nine hours and 54 minutes. You want to go deep diving, you know, nine hours and 54 minutes. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people in churches that haven't spent that much solid time actually studying the Bible and biblical origins and looking at different translations. Um, man, they, they go deep down. They're a lot of fun. Uh, again, there's no one channel that we're all going to agree with. I, I know a lot of you guys don't uh, agree with us on certain things. That's fine. This is Paul Wallace's The Fifth Kind. This is a lot of fun. He's a former priest again, and he realized, you know, hey, <laughs> I, I, I lost my faith because... You know, my faith was misguided, and that's wonderful. You know, but doesn't mean that you lost all faith because you, now you you can you know, you know what you know. There's obviously a creator of all this, obviously. And Praveen Mohan, who who is a little uh, dramatic and fantastic at times, but he goes to some interesting places. He really, really does. Um, and so, you know, he, again, shows a lot of things that are just absolutely, totally inconsistent. And there's absolutely no way uh, that we're being told the truth. So Praveen Mohan's a good one, too. Um, I had several people mention this channel to me. I think Janie did last time. So I was looking at Archaics, and uh, he is somebody that spent time in jail and did a lot of studying and, uh, you know, came up with a lot of inconsistencies. And he's he's deep dived and, um, you know, again, interesting to get different takes. And I think really the strength um, that we can get in these times is from really diversifying everything that we're looking at, looking at all the angles that are possible it certainly seems like he's looked from a lot of different angles. Future forecasters, uh, I've talked about these guys before. They're remote viewers. Uh, it's just fun. It's just fun stuff. Um, there's different remote viewers that contribute on this channel. And they're sharing what they see. So we can all do this. It's just a matter of awakening to the possibilities. Mm -hmm. I, it does. It, it takes some time. You know, it takes working working with yourself and spending a lot of time within and and healing a lot of wounds because when you're uh, navigating this kind of energy it can be very very powerful and if it doesn't have like this clean uh, ability to just go where it needs to go it, that's going to cause trauma i know it sounds really strange but it causes trauma it's just something that's not often taught a lot of people think oh psychic abilities you know it's just really easy i'll just jump right in and find themselves in a lot of pain in some way shape or form because they didn't heal past trauma so that's why i'm always telling people you know if you want to develop them the first thing you need to do is you need to start working on yourself self-love taking care of yourself, healing those traumas. And, you know, where can we find a lot of this ability to open our heart chakra and use it with, use our heart chakra just as wide as we want to use it? Because that's where it comes from. This psychic ability comes from the heart chakra. Love on your pets. Love on your pets. I mean, they're not going to do anything that's going to block your heart chakra. They're not going to hurt you. And it does. It gives you that ability to exercise the heart chakra in a clean, clear open way and and my gosh do they not deserve it they're just so beautiful absolutely so again we look forward to your comments you know i, I especially bring this up after reading some comments um looking at uh different acts of war happening and watching how people are making comments of glee when others are suffering because they've picked a side and they don't realize that these people are manipulated on both sides. We, we, how do you stop this? It, it's by stepping out of it. The only way is by stepping out of it. Of course, if, if, if your, your own life is being threatened, you always have a right to self-defense. That's a given. But again, is it self-defense when you're 3,000 miles you know, away from home? 
No, that's not self-defense. And that, that's how the U.S. has been used and, and other NATO countries too, but primarily the U.S. since World War II. And now they're just going to shift and they're going to use other people in the way they use the U.S. And now the U.S. is going to have the karmic fate of, of the Native Americans that were here when the Europeans and the system moved in and and pushed them out. So, you know, this is how they they understand how karma works. They use it to their advantage. They keep us fighting ourselves in never ending cycles, always fomenting uh, the patriotism and the adherence to different ideologies of which they've given us all the ideologies. You know, and we were just talking about that, um, how they use the word patriot, uh, patriot, you know, and then they passed a bill called the Patriot Act. And then I, I hear a lot of people, the, 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 the food that they buy, that patriot food, and it, it really, I mean, if, if there were a, a everything was down scenario and all I had was the patriot, patriot food, I mean, I would probably swell up and burst and die sooner. So, I mean, I don't think that that food is very good for you, even though it appears that they're doing a very good thing. I, I think their heart's in the right spot, but we need to be, the, the word patriot is just kind of misused, it seems. Yeah, and again, uh, stay clear of <laughs> non, you know, you don't want GMOs. And you don't want anything that's not organic. And we understand the entire world's not organic. Indeed. So I hope you guys got something out of this. I hope um, we helped some people. I don't know. I guess free themselves. That's what I see. I see I want people to free their heart chakras to feel good about exploring who they are and not feel bad about your curiosities that you have in this world. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.